Stephen froze in place, his muscles tensing as the unmistakable voice of his mother-in-law echoed from the bedroom. It was disturbingly clear, and from the sound of it she was praising someone. Grace. But the words confused him, their meaning twisting in his mind, sending a cold shiver down his spine. He had come home earlier than planned, hoping to surprise his wife with dinner, but that excitement vanished the moment he reached the slightly ajar bedroom door. The conversation inside, though muffled, made his heart race, pounding louder with each beat. Were they talking about him? His fingers gripped the grocery bags tightly, his knuckles turning white as he strained to catch more details of the conversation. He heard Grace laugh softly, a familiar sound, but now it seemed distant and unsettling. What were they hiding? He wondered, moving closer, his breathing shallow as suspicion and confusion gnawed at his mind. Grace's laughter grew nervous. I don't know how much longer I can keep this up, she said, her voice trembling. But so far, he hasn't noticed anything. Stephen felt something inside him break. A wave of terror washed over him, mixed with anger and disbelief. He had an unbearable urge to fling open the door and demand an explanation, but he hesitated. He wasn't ready yet. He needed to understand what was happening before he acted. He leaned in closer, peering through the small crack in the door. Grace was sitting on the bed, her back to him, talking on the phone. She didn't look worried. On the contrary, she seemed relieved. Her mother's voice crackled on the other end of the line. I've told you before, sweetheart, there's nothing to worry about. Stephen has always trusted you too much. He won't suspect a thing unless you make a mistake. Just stick to the plan. Stephen's stomach twisted with pain. The plan? His thoughts swirled, barely holding on to coherence as the weight of her mother's words sank into his mind. This was about him. But what was the plan, and how long had they been hiding it? His thoughts spiraled into a whirlwind, flashing through a thousand terrible scenarios. His gaze stayed locked on Grace, who ran her hand through her hair and sighed heavily. I know, Mom, she said, but the guilt is killing me. I never thought it would go on this long. Eighteen years is a long time to keep a secret. Stephen's world tilted, the words hitting him like a punch to the gut. Eighteen years. That was the entire span of their marriage. He nearly stumbled back from the door, barely able to stand as the realization crashed over him. He didn't want to believe it. He couldn't believe it. But the truth slowly crept into him, piece by painful piece. Eighteen years. Our entire marriage? Questions flooded his mind. Questions he was terrified to have answered. What was this secret? Why had they hidden it from him for so long? His hands trembled as he carefully set the grocery bags down on the floor, the dinner he had planned now a distant thought. The man who had come home to surprise his wife no longer existed. In his place stood someone else, someone on the verge of a painful truth, a revelation that had been hidden from him for far too long. He moved closer to the door, barely breathing. Grace's voice broke the silence again, now tinged with frustration. I'm just scared, Mom. I never wanted this to last so long. But every time I try to stop, I can't. The kids, our life, everything is too intertwined. Her mother's laughter sent a chill down Stephen's spine. Oh, darling, you've always handled these things so well, she said. Stephen has never had any reason to doubt you. You've done everything perfectly. Just stay calm and don't worry too much. The most important thing is that you've kept the family together. And that's all that matters. Stephen's heart pounded in his chest, his thoughts racing. What had she been hiding all these years? What had he been blind to? The sense of betrayal weighed heavier and heavier. The pieces of his life, once solid and certain, beginning to crack and crumble around him. Stephen leaned against the wall, struggling to keep his balance as if the ground was slipping away beneath his feet. His throat was dry and his vision was clouded by rage. Through the closed door, he could hear muffled voices discussing him as though he were oblivious, a stranger in his own marriage. He had always been loyal and faithful, 
fulfilling his role as a husband. But all this time, she had been deceiving him. A powerful surge of emotion rose within him. He wanted to burst into the room, demand explanations, and uncover the truth she had been hiding. But something held him back. If he stormed in now, all he would hear would be more lies and evasions. He needed facts. He had to understand what he was truly up against. He stepped away from the door, allowing the conversation behind it to fade into the background. His thoughts raced. Grace wasn't going to confess, not to him, and certainly not voluntarily. He had to find another way to discover the truth. Quietly, not wanting to draw attention, he moved away from the bedroom, pulled out his phone, and with trembling hands began scrolling through his contacts, not even sure what he was looking for. And then it hit him. DNA tests. He had read about them, how they could reveal family secrets, ancestry, and origins. His children. The thought abruptly stopped him. His children were his entire world. But what if, what if they weren't his? The mere thought made him feel sick. He had always pushed such doubts away, convincing himself they were ridiculous. But why didn't his children look like him? A question he had long suppressed now demanded an answer. His finger hovered over the screen, ready to search for a DNA testing service. Guilt washed over him. Once he took this step, there would be no turning back. He would either uncover the darkest truth or realize he had been paranoid all along. But after what he had overheard, trust was no longer an option. He tapped the screen, and within minutes, the test was ordered. Stephen stared at the confirmation message, feeling his chest tighten with fear. In just a few days, the test kit would arrive, and soon after, he would have his answer. Stephen glanced toward the bedroom, where Grace's laughter had now fallen silent. The woman he once knew was gone. In her place stood a stranger, a woman who had hidden the truth, who had destroyed their life together. As he bent down to pick up the grocery bags from the floor, he felt the weight of her betrayal pressing on his shoulders. He carried the bags to the kitchen and placed them on the counter, but his thoughts were far from the present moment. That evening, he didn't confront her. Instead, they had a quiet dinner. Grace, unaware of the storm brewing inside him, chatted about the children, her day at work, and their weekend plans. Stephen nodded, occasionally forcing a smile, but his mind was elsewhere. The food on his plate tasted bland. Every word she spoke felt like another layer of deceit. He decided to wait. To wait for the DNA test results that would reveal the truth. Until then, he would continue playing the role of the clueless husband. The one she thought she had fooled. But in reality, Stephen was already preparing for what was to come. Once the truth came out, their lives would never be the same again. The days following his decision blurred together, with fragments of the overheard conversation replaying endlessly in his mind as he analyzed them from every angle. He tried to forget it all, to convince himself that he might have misinterpreted everything, but the nagging doubt had lodged itself in his mind like a splinter he couldn't remove. What was she hiding? This question tormented him. He couldn't bring himself to ask her directly. Every time he imagined that conversation, he thought about the children, Charlotte, Kevin, and little Isabella, who were blissfully unaware of the silent war raging in his soul. Their innocence, untouched by the tension hanging in the air, was the only thing that stopped him from tearing everything apart. Stephen knew that he couldn't destroy everything without being absolutely certain of the truth. One night, after the children had long been asleep, and Grace was still in the shower, he found himself alone at the dinner table, with his laptop open in front of him. His fingers hovered above the keyboard, as if waiting for the answers he feared to appear on the screen. Taking a deep breath, he no longer hesitated and typed DNA testing into the search bar. His heart pounded as he began scrolling through the results, fully aware that once he took this step, there would be no going back. Doubt had gnawed at him for years. Charlotte's golden brown skin, Kevin's jet black hair, and Isabella's dark, soulful eyes didn't resemble his family's features. 
Grace always laughed it off, saying the kids must have inherited their looks from distant relatives. Genes work in mysterious ways, she would say, and for a long time Stephen forced himself to believe that, until now. He scrolled through different DNA testing kits, reading about how they could reveal ancestry, detect health risks, and most importantly, establish paternity. He examined the prices and delivery times, two to three weeks. It felt like an eternity, but Stephen knew he couldn't wait any longer. What if they weren't his? The mere thought made him feel sick. These children were his. At least they had always been in his heart. The idea that someone else could be their father, that the past 18 years of his life could have been built on a lie, was unbearable. But there was no turning back now. With a heavy heart, Stephen clicked order on the DNA test kit. A confirmation message appeared on the screen. It was done. A weight settled on his shoulders, far heavier than he had anticipated. He leaned back in his chair, staring blankly at the screen. Now, all he could do was wait. Three days later, a plain, unremarkable box appeared on the doorstep. Stephen picked it up, his hands trembling as he looked around to make sure no one saw him. The children were in the living room, and Grace was on the phone with a friend, unaware of the storm brewing inside him. He slipped into the bathroom and locked the door behind him. Opening the box, he carefully unfolded the instructions. It was simple, a quick cheek swab for each child, filling out a few forms, and then sending it all back. Stephen had already thought about how to collect the samples. Their evening routine would make it easy. The kids were used to brushing their teeth before bed every night. That evening, after dinner, he followed the usual routine, guiding the children upstairs to put them to bed. Charlotte, who was already seventeen, was almost asleep when he kissed her goodnight. Kevin, at twelve, was absorbed in his comic books and barely looked up when Stephen wished him a good night. But eight-year-old Isabella was full of energy, bouncing on her bed in her pajamas. Time for bed, sweetie, Stephen said, hiding the storm raging inside him behind a soft smile. Will you tell me a bedtime story? Isabella asked, gazing up at him with her big brown eyes. Of course, Stephen replied, sitting on the edge of her bed, though his thoughts were far from the story. As he read to her, his eyes kept drifting to her dark curls and innocent face, and the question gnawed at him. Was she really his? The thought was unbearable, but he pushed it aside. He needed to know. After finishing the story, he took her to the bathroom for their nightly routine. Open your mouth he said in a cheerful tone as he took a cheek swab, and she giggled, unaware of what he was really doing. He repeated the process with Kevin and Charlotte, carefully placing each swab into a labeled envelope. It was done. The children suspected nothing, and neither did Grace. A mix of guilt and strange relief washed over Stephen as he sealed the samples in the prepaid envelope. The next morning, he dropped the package into the mailbox watching it disappear through the slot with a sense of dread and anticipation. The waiting began. Each day dragged on painfully, and time seemed to stretch endlessly. At work, Stephen struggled to focus. Every time Gray spoke to him or the children called him Dad, the guilt gnawed at him, as if he were living a life that might soon be exposed as a lie. He sat in silence, his expression carefully neutral, though his thoughts raced with incredible speed. The news he was expecting could either confirm his worst suspicions or bring him the much-awaited relief. One evening, while they were sitting on the couch and the children were upstairs watching a movie, Grace noticed his distant state. She gently touched his hand and moved closer. You've been too quiet lately, she said softly, her gaze fixed on his face. Is everything all right? she asked a note of worry in her voice. Stephen forced a tight smile, but his eyes remained cold. Yeah, just work. It's been a lot lately. Grace frowned slightly, sensing something deeper, but chose not to push. Instead, she moved even closer and rested her head on his shoulder. Stephen tensed at her touch, the weight of her presence becoming almost unbearable. 
The woman he had loved for 18 years might be hiding a secret capable of shattering his world, but he wasn't ready to confront it. Yet. Two weeks later, the letter he had been dreading arrived. Sitting alone at the dining table, Stephen stared at his phone. The unread message in his hands felt like a ticking bomb. His palms grew sweaty as he pressed the screen, his heart thundering in his chest as the message loaded. The results were unmistakable. His hands trembled as he read the lines over and over again, the words blurring before his eyes. His worst fear had become reality. The children were not his, not a single one. The phone slipped from his hands and hit the table with a loud thud. He pushed back his chair, gasping for air as his chest tightened, the truth choking him. The nightmare he had long feared was now undeniable, staring him in the face. He paced around the room, his thoughts in chaos. What now? His entire life had been turned upside down, and Grace, the woman he trusted most, had destroyed it. The children, the children weren't his. The realization crashed over him like a tsunami, drowning him in its surge. For the first time in years, Stephen felt completely lost. Grace's betrayal had shattered the life he thought was his, and now he had to decide what to do next. Time passed, and the day he had both dreaded and anticipated finally came. The new test results, this time in a small, inconspicuous envelope, lay on the kitchen table. His name was neatly printed on the front, but the contents inside could destroy whatever was left of his world. Stephen's hands shook as he reached for the envelope, his heart pounding in his chest. He stood frozen, staring at it, before finally summoning the courage to open it. The paper felt heavy in his hands as he unfolded it. His eyes scanned the lines until they stopped on one phrase, printed in bold, Mexican heritage. Stephen blinked, his mind struggling to process it. He read it again, slower this time, hoping the meaning would change. Mexican? It didn't make sense. His roots were Irish, and Grace's were English. But the results were unmistakable. Only one explanation came to mind, and when it hit him, it was like a punch to the gut. His half-brother Anthony. Anthony's father was Mexican. The room spun as the realization struck him. Stephen's legs gave out, and he collapsed onto the nearest chair. Anthony. Of course. He had ignored the signs for years. The darker skin of their children, their black hair, the delicate facial features that never matched his or Grace's family. For years he had convinced himself the children took after Grace's relatives. For years Grace had reassured him, kissed him, though she had known all along. She always knew. His children were not his. The betrayal burned inside him, erasing any last doubts. Nausea rose in his stomach as the weight of it all pressed down on him with unbearable force, heavier than ever before. His stomach twisted painfully, and his chest tightened as he leaned forward gripping the table to keep his balance, gasping for air. His trembling fingers barely managed to put the papers back in place. His eyes were wide open, frozen in disbelief. Eighteen years. Eighteen long years of marriage. Eighteen years of love, loyalty, and devotion. His entire world revolved around Grace, their life together, their family. And all this time, she had been betraying him, secretly meeting Anthony, his half-brother. Stephen jumped to his feet abruptly, knocking over the chair with a loud crash that echoed through the room. But he didn't care. His heart pounded wildly in his chest, the deafening rhythm roaring in his ears. His breathing became rapid and shallow as he paced back and forth in the kitchen. A whirlwind of rage, heartbreak, and confusion stormed through his mind. The sharp vibration of his phone pulled him out of the haze. He looked at the screen. Grace had sent a message. Staying late at work will be home in an hour. Love you. Love you? Those words felt like a cruel mockery. Rage clouded his vision. With a furious motion, he threw the phone onto the kitchen table. His jaw clenched so tightly it hurt. How could she do this? How could she pretend everything was fine? That she hadn't just shattered his world? Stephen's thoughts shifted to his family, his parents his brothers and sisters. They knew. 
He was certain of it now. They had all been part of it, each playing a role in this elaborate deception. They had hidden it from him, covering for Grace and Anthony while he lived in ignorance. The betrayal from his own family, the people he trusted most, caused a pain he had never felt before. His fist crashed down onto the table with a thud, the sound reverberating through the room. Inside, everything was boiling with fury, but soon a cold clarity began to take over. What now? He could rush to Grace. He could wait for her to come home and throw the truth in her face. But what would that change? She would lie, as she had done for the past 18 years. Maybe she would beg for forgiveness, shed a few tears, but none of it would alter the truth. He could go after Anthony. The thought of his half-brother, once his friend, his confidant, having an affair with his wife, ignited a fresh wave of anger. The image of Anthony smiling at him while stabbing him in the back made Stephen sick. The urge to drive to Anthony's house, grab him by the throat, and demand answers flared up again. But deep down, Stephen knew it wouldn't change anything. His gaze landed on the family photos on the wall. Pictures from birthdays, holidays, school events. They all seemed empty now, meaningless, mere remnants of a life built on lies. His eyes lingered on the photo of the five of them, Stephen, Grace, and the children, smiling together on a family vacation. His heart twisted painfully as he realized that even these precious memories were now tainted. Every smile, every laugh, every moment of joy was overshadowed by the knowledge of what had been happening behind his back. It wasn't just Grace and Anthony, his parents, his brothers and sisters. They had all played their part in this betrayal. The understanding that his entire family had been complicit in the deception cut so deeply that Stephen doubted the wound would ever heal. For years, they had stood by, watching him raise children that weren't his, watching him faithfully play the role of husband and father, all the while knowing the truth. The walls of the kitchen seemed to close in around him as he leaned on the table, his body shaking under the weight of it all. What was he supposed to do now? He couldn't stay here. He couldn't see Grace tonight. He needed space, needed time to think. He needed to clear his head and figure out what to do next. Without thinking, he grabbed his jacket from the hook by the door and stepped out into the night. The cold evening wind lashed against his face like an icy rebuke, but he welcomed the pain. It cut through the fog in his mind, offering a fleeting moment of clarity. He walked, his feet carrying him along the empty streets on their own accord. His thoughts swirled, jumping from one possibility to another. He could simply leave, vanish and abandon everything. But then what? What about the children? They were innocent in all of this, and no matter how the circumstances unfolded, he loved them with all his heart. Yet how could he continue being their father, knowing now that they weren't truly his? He wandered the streets for what seemed like hours, but no answers came, only the same relentless questions. When he finally returned home, the house was steeped in silence and darkness. Grace had already come back, put the kids to bed and gone to sleep, unaware of the storm cloud hanging over them all. Stephen stood in the doorway, staring at the house he had built, at the family he had thought was his. His hands clenched into fists as a new wave of anger surged through him, but this time it wasn't just rage. It was determination, no more illusions. He had made his decision. Tomorrow, everything would change. The next evening, the weight of betrayal had become unbearable. It gnawed at him all day, suffocating him, making it hard to breathe. When Stephen walked into the house that night, he felt like a ticking time bomb, ready to explode. Grace was sitting at the kitchen table, lazily scrolling through her phone, a half-finished cup of tea beside her. She looked so calm, so unaware that their world was about to crumble beneath them. She had no idea what was coming. Stephen stood in the doorway, his heart pounding in his chest, his fists clenched at his sides. The revelations he had uncovered raced through his mind. Anger blazed inside him like an uncontrollable fire. He took a deep breath, trying to maintain his composure, 
but when he finally spoke, his words came out harsh and cold. Grace! His voice was quiet, but there was a threat in it. She looked up from her phone, the smile on her face fading as she saw the expression on his. There was no warmth in his eyes, no love, only sharp, cold fury. What's wrong? She asked uncertainly, but she didn't move from her seat. Without answering, Stephen reached into his pocket and pulled out the crumpled DNA test results. His hand trembled as he threw the papers onto the table in front of her. The sheets scattered across the surface, a few falling to the floor, but one remained, its bold words, Mexican ancestry, glaring up at them both. Explain this, Stephen said, barely containing the rage boiling inside him. Grace's face drained of color as her eyes locked onto the document. She froze, her hands trembling as she carefully set down her phone. What, what is this? She stammered, but her voice betrayed her growing panic. Her gaze darted between the paper and Stephen, as if hoping it was something else, something less damning. You know exactly what this is, Stephen spat, venom dripping from his words. It's a DNA test, and guess what? Our children, your children, have Mexican ancestry. He slammed his fist on the table, making Grace flinch. I'm not Mexican, Grace, but Anthony is... Her face turned deathly pale. She opened her mouth, but no sound came out. Her hands shook as she reached for the paper, but the horror in her eyes was unmistakable. She wasn't confused. She knew she was caught. Stephen, I... I can explain everything, she whispered, barely audible. Stephen let out a bitter, mocking laugh filled with all the years of pain he had bottled up. Explain, he said with a sarcasm that cut like a knife. How do you explain an affair with my half-brother for eighteen years, Grace? His voice broke as the full weight of the betrayal crashed down on him. Eighteen years! Our entire marriage! Was a lie! Tears welled up in Grace's eyes and rolled down her face as she slowly stood up her body trembling as she tried to take a step toward him. Her hands, shaking with emotion, reached out in a silent attempt to comfort him, but Stephen stepped back, his face contorting with a painful mixture of anger and disappointment. Please, Stephen, she begged, her voice quivering under the weight of despair. It was a mistake. I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. Eighteen years, Grace, Stephen interrupted her loudly his voice thundering like a storm. Eighteen years and you never once confused your actions with something else. This isn't just a mistake you can erase. You cheated on me with Anthony for eighteen years, Stephen continued, his voice breaking under the weight of his pain. You gave me children who weren't even mine, and you hid the truth all this time. Our families, the people I trusted, helped you keep this secret. I was a complete fool, Grace. A complete fool. Grace completely broke down, her body shaking with sobs, tears streaming down her face, which was already red from suffering. She collapsed onto the floor in front of him, clutching at his legs, her voice barely discernible through her crying. Stephen, please, I love you, I've always loved you. It was a mistake, but it meant nothing, absolutely nothing. Stephen stepped back, his words laced with disgust. Nothing? You lied to me for years, pretending I was the father of these children, all while sleeping with my stepbrother. And now you want me to believe it meant nothing? Grace's sobs grew louder, her grip on his legs tightened, and she looked up at him, her eyes full of desperation. I didn't want to hurt you. I didn't know how to stop. Just please give me a chance to make things right. We can get through this together. But Stephen shook his head. Horror visible on his face as he pulled his leg from her grasp and took another step back, as if her touch burned him. There's nothing left to fix, Grace. You destroyed everything we had. How can I trust you again? Stephen asked, his voice now quieter though still tinged with bitterness. How can I believe that anything in our life was real? Grace, her face still drenched in tears, looked up at him, her sobs reduced to quiet, broken gasps. Stephen, I swear I love you. I never loved Anthony. I... Enough! Stephen cut her off, his voice cold and final. Don't lie to me anymore. Silence, heavy like a burden, fell over the room. Grace remained on the floor, 
her sobs gradually subsiding, while Stephen looked down at her, his heart hollow where love once resided. I gave you everything, Stephen finally said, his voice trembling with grief. My life, my trust, my heart, and all you gave me in return was lies. Grace shook her head, her words broken by despair. Stephen, the children, they love you. You're their father in every way. Please don't leave them. Don't abandon them. Mentioning the children brought Stephen fresh pain, but he remained resolute. I love them, he said quietly, but you've taken their real father away from them. You took away all of our choices. Grace's eyes widened in fear, her heart seized with panic. So you're just going to leave? Throw away everything we built together? Stephen stared at her for what felt like an eternity, the silence between them unbearable. Then, his voice flat and empty, he shook his head. You threw it away a long time ago. Without another word, he turned and left. Grace's voice rose behind him, calling his name, but he didn't stop. He didn't even look back. The sound of the front door closing echoed in the quiet night. As Stephen stepped outside, the cool breeze touched his face, and for the first time in weeks, he felt something other than pain. It wasn't full peace, but it was clarity. The life he knew was shattered, but now he could finally start anew. For the first time in many years, Stephen felt free. The tension in the house had become unbearable after Stephen's confrontation with Grace. The home, once filled with warmth and joy, had turned into a cold, suffocating silence. Desperate to fix everything, Grace tried everything she could. She dropped to her knees, her face streaked with tears, begging him for forgiveness. Stephen, I swear, it ended with Anthony years ago, she sobbed, her voice hoarse from crying. But her words barely moved him. To Stephen, her apologies felt hollow, like distant echoes from a life that was already shattered. One evening, they sat across from each other at the kitchen table. Her hands trembled as she reached out for his, her voice barely audible. Stephen, we can fix this, she whispered. Look at everything we've built. Please don't destroy it. Stephen looked at her, his face expressionless, the warmth in his eyes long gone. You destroyed it yourself when you got into bed with him, he replied, his voice calm but as cold as ice. Eighteen years, Grace. Eighteen years. And you think you can fix this? His words cut through her like a blade, piercing her heart. Grace broke down completely, covering her face with her hands, her sobs uncontrollable. But Stephen remained distant, resolute in his decision. Nothing she said or did could sway him. The weight of her betrayal was too unbearable for him. The future he had envisioned with her was gone. The love and trust he had cherished for so many years evaporated the moment the truth came to light. But it wasn't just Grace's betrayal that consumed him. There was something more. His anger began to change. It was no longer just rage. It had become cold and calculating. Leaving Grace wasn't enough for him. Stephen wanted everyone who had betrayed him to feel the same pain he was enduring. A week later, he decided to confront his parents. He invited them over one evening, telling them they needed to discuss something important. When they arrived, the atmosphere was tense. Without saying a word, Stephen tossed the DNA test results onto the coffee table, just as he had done with Grace. His father picked up the papers, his hands trembling as he read. Stephen, what is this? he asked, though his voice already carried guilt. His mother sat motionless beside him, her face pale and lifeless. Stephen leaned forward, his eyes burning with fury. It's a DNA test, he said coldly. It shows that my children aren't mine. They belong to Anthony. His mother gasped, her hand flying to her mouth, her eyes wide with shock. But Stephen saw through her reaction. Guilt was written all over her face. You knew, didn't you? He asked, his voice shaking with barely contained rage. Didn't you? His father cleared his throat, avoiding Stephen's gaze. We, we didn't want to hurt you, son. It was complicated. Complicated? Stephen roared, his voice booming, causing his parents to flinch. I trusted you. 
You're my parents and you hid this from me. You let me raise children that aren't mine. You let me live a lie and said nothing. Tears filled his mother's eyes as she stammered. We thought it would be better this way, Stephen. You were happy. Happy? Stephen interrupted her, suddenly standing up. You think I'm happy now? After finding out that both of you betrayed me? After realizing you stood by and let all this happen? Finally, his father looked him in the eye, his voice heavy with emotion. We didn't know how to tell you, Stephen. We were afraid it would destroy you. We never wanted this. Stephen shook his head in disbelief, overwhelmed by his pain. You didn't want to destroy me? He repeated bitterly. Congratulations. You succeeded. His mother reached out, crying uncontrollably, but Stephen stepped back, his face firm and resolute. I trusted each of you, he said quietly, his voice thick with pain. And each of you betrayed me. He turned abruptly and left, leaving his parents in a heavy silence. Their faces were etched with deep regret and sadness. Although his heart was heavy, his resolve remained unshaken as he made his way toward his siblings. His younger sister, Lisa, had always been someone close to him, or so he had thought. But when he showed her the DNA results, her reaction was the same as their parents. Her face turned pale as the truth began to sink in. She opened her mouth, likely to offer some kind of explanation, but Stephen cut her off before she could say a word. Don't start, Lisa, he said coldly with no warmth in his voice. I know you've been keeping this secret. You've been protecting Anthony all this time, haven't you? Lisa's eyes filled with tears, her guilt evident. Stephen, I didn't know how to tell you, she stammered, her voice barely audible. I was afraid it would destroy you. He clenched his jaw, anger boiling inside once more. That's all you ever say, he spat, each word dripping with bitterness. But do you know what's worse? Realizing that the people I trusted most have been lying to me for years? You all stood by while I lived in a lie, raising children that weren't mine, and none of you said a word. Lisa collapsed into sobs, covering her face with her hands. I'm sorry, Stephen, she cried. I never wanted things to turn out this way. His voice softened, but the pain remained. It's too late for apologies, Lisa. I don't think I'll ever be able to forgive any of you. He turned and walked away, not looking back at her as she continued to sob in the living room. Each step felt heavier than the last, burdened by the betrayal that gnawed at him from the inside. But his mission was not yet complete. He turned his attention to Grace's family confronting them with the same raw truth. They, too, had known about the affair. Grace's parents had even helped her maintain the illusion, helping to create a life with Stephen built on lies. They offered pitiful excuses, but Stephen no longer cared. The reasons no longer mattered. What mattered was that they had all deceived him. With every confrontation, a part of him hardened, and the pain transformed into something darker. He was not just angry, he was resolute. He was no longer just a victim of their lies. He was determined to make them feel the same emptiness. Without warning, Stephen packed his things. He left no note, gave no explanation. He simply vanished, leaving Grace, their children, and their families behind. He severed all ties, swiftly and without hesitation. He changed his phone number, deleted his online presence, and completely disappeared. The life he once knew was shattered, leaving only pain, and he was no longer willing to endure it. As he left the city that had been his home for so many years, his mind was consumed with thoughts of revenge. He wasn't just leaving, he was going to make them pay. Grace, Anthony, his parents, his siblings, Grace's parents, they had all betrayed him, and each of them would suffer for it. He intended to rebuild his life far away from those who had hurt him, and they would be left to deal with the consequences of their actions. For three long years, Stephen disappeared from the lives of everyone who had ever known him. It was as if he had vanished from the face of the earth. He carefully erased every trace of his existence, severing all ties, changing his phone number, and deleting all his online profiles that could link him to his past. Even his closest friends, 
Those not involved in the betrayal received no answers. He traveled the world, eventually settling in another country, far from the suffocating reminders of his former life. The man he had been no longer existed. Now his days were filled with the process of rebuilding, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. He needed to become someone else, someone who could survive without the people who had destroyed his world. His new life was solitary and quiet. He took on various odd jobs, never staying in one place for too long, but always keeping an eye on the future. Slowly but surely, he carved out a new path in his life, breaking free from the chains that had once held him captive. He found success in real estate, flipping houses in small, quiet towns and earning a steady income. In this new environment, no one knew his true identity, and that suited him just fine. Yet Stephen still cast a shadow over everything, continuing to influence events even as he rebuilt his life from the ruins of the past. Deep down, he couldn't stop looking back at the devastation he had left behind. Stephen didn't need to be physically present to keep tabs on the lives of those who had once been a part of his world. Through a combination of private investigators and his own digital skills, he kept a distant eye on Grace, Anthony, and the rest of his family. Soon, an opportunity for revenge arose. During his investigation into Anthony's life, Stephen stumbled upon something that made his heart race. Anthony's seemingly legitimate construction company was involved in shady business. Stephen hired a detective to dig deeper into the situation, and what they uncovered was highly incriminating. Anthony was cutting corners on materials, bribing officials, and using substandard building supplies in his projects. Illegal activities hidden behind a facade of respectability. Stephen realized it wouldn't take much effort to expose Anthony's corruption and bring down his entire operation. Armed with concrete evidence, Stephen prepared an anonymous letter, attached the incriminating documents, and sent them to the authorities. Then, he waited. Twenty days later, the story broke. Anthony's company was under investigation for fraud and numerous safety violations. What began as a local scandal quickly spread to regional and national media. Within weeks, Anthony's business was in shambles. Clients terminated contracts, the city revoked his licenses, and lawsuits began flooding in. Anthony's downfall was complete. From his safe haven, miles away from the epicenter of the chaos, Stephen watched as the destruction unfolded. Yet there was no satisfaction in his gaze, no sense of victory. His actions hadn't been for joy or triumph. They were for justice, to ensure that Anthony paid for the lies and deceit that had stolen years of Stephen's life. Meanwhile, Grace faced the consequences of her own decisions. Without Stephen's financial support, she struggled to keep her life afloat. She had no way of reaching him despite all her attempts. She had sent him nearly a hundred letters, left messages on every phone number she knew, but never received a response. Stephen had made sure to remain unreachable. Isolated and alone with three children, Grace's life began to unravel. She was forced to sell the house they had once lived in together and move into a modest apartment in a less prestigious area. Her family, who had once shielded her from the consequences of her actions, now kept their distance. Anthony, consumed by his own collapse, offered no help. The affair that had destroyed Stephen's life became a constant reminder of Grace's failures. Stephen read every letter she sent, sensing the desperation behind her words. She begged for forgiveness, for a chance to explain, but to him, her words rang hollow. She had made her choice, and now she had to live with its consequences. Three years after Stephen had vanished from their lives, his plan was complete. He had destroyed the lives of everyone who had betrayed him, not just Grace and Anthony, but the entire circle of people involved in the deception. His parents, siblings, even Grace's family, none were spared. Each faced social or financial ruin for their part in the betrayal. Yet despite all of this, Stephen wasn't entirely indifferent. There were nights when he lay awake, wondering if all this revenge had been worth it. Sometimes, he almost considered reaching out and offering forgiveness. But then he remembered the betrayal, 
and any thoughts of reconciliation disappeared as quickly as they had come. The final blow came when Stephen learned that Grace had filed for bankruptcy. He had watched her life fall apart piece by piece, but this was her ultimate collapse. She lost her home, her social standing, and now, everything else. Her last letter to Stephen was unlike all the others. There was no anger, no pleas for forgiveness. Instead, it was filled with quiet resignation. Stephen, she wrote, I don't know if you'll ever read this, but I had to try. Everything has fallen apart. The kids miss you terribly, and we all feel your absence. Now I understand how serious my mistake was, and I don't expect forgiveness. I just had to say it. Forgive me. For everything. Stephen closed the letter, his eyes glued to the screen for what felt like an eternity. For so long his resentment had fueled him, but as he reread those words, he felt something inside him shift. He couldn't tell if it was sympathy beginning to seep into his heart, or simply the exhaustion from years of anger. One thing was clear. He was no longer the man he used to be. The rage and destruction had played their part, but now they belonged to his past. Stephen closed the laptop, stood up, and walked out onto the balcony. The cool night air brushed against his face. Somewhere far away, Grace and Anthony were dealing with the consequences of their decisions. But here, in his new life, Stephen was free from the weight of the past, and for the first time in many years, he allowed himself to let it go. Three years had passed since Stephen severed the ties to his former life, walking away from the chaos and betrayal that had nearly destroyed him. During that time, he had slowly and deliberately rebuilt his life, step by step. The man who had once been deceived and broken was long gone. He had reinvented himself, settling in a remote corner of the world. In this small coastal town, life was quieter, simpler. Here, he had found peace. The constant ebb and flow of the ocean had become his daily refuge, its waves reminding him that life, like the sea, moves in cycles, and even the deepest wounds can heal with time. In this quiet place, Stephen found something unexpected, or rather, someone, Anna. Their first meeting hadn't been anything special. It was an ordinary Tuesday at the local farmer's market when Stephen noticed her haggling with a vendor over the price of oranges. Her laughter, bright and unrestrained, immediately caught his attention. It was a sound full of life, drawing him in without him even realizing it. Anna was different, unlike anyone he had known before. She didn't hide behind masks, didn't conceal ulterior motives. She lived in the moment her presence so radiant and irresistible. What began as casual encounters soon became intentional. Coffee at a coastal cafe turned into long walks on the beach, then into dinners that stretched far past midnight, their conversations drifting under the starry sky. One warm summer afternoon, Stephen and Anna strolled along the beach, the waves gently lapping at their feet. The setting sun painted the sky in shades of orange and pink, creating the perfect backdrop for their relaxed conversation. Anna playfully kicked up some sand as they walked. So, when am I going to meet your mysterious family? She asked with a teasing smile, gently nudging his shoulder. Stephen hesitated for a moment, his smile faltering slightly. That part of his life was locked away, guarded like a fortress. Anna knew fragments of his past, but not the full story. He had never mentioned Grace, Anthony, or the life he had left behind. Not because he didn't trust her, but because that chapter was closed. He was no longer that man. Maybe someday, Stephen replied, his tone light but deliberately vague. He took her hand, their fingers intertwining as if it were an anchor, keeping him grounded in the present. Anna had a way of pulling him out of the darkness of the past, reminding him of the beauty that still existed in life. She looked at him with curiosity but didn't press. She was always like that, patient, understanding. She never asked for more than he was willing to give, and for that, he loved her even more. As they continued walking along the shore, Stephen felt a deep sense of peace. For the first time in years, 
he was truly calm. The ghosts of his past no longer haunted him as they once had. With Anna by his side, he found a sense of normalcy that had seemed impossible after everything that had happened. That night they sat together on the porch of the small beach house, a bottle of wine between them. The ocean stretched endlessly before them, the sound of the waves filling the quiet evening. Anna leaned back in her chair, tucking her legs beneath her, the embodiment of tranquility. This is perfect, she whispered softly, her eyes half-closed, lost in the serenity of the moment. Stephen leaned back in his chair, exhaling with a quiet sigh of contentment. He could easily get used to this feeling of peace. A relaxed smile touched the corners of his lips as his gaze shifted toward her. Yes, he murmured in agreement, feeling completely at ease. Everything in this moment seemed to be in its place. As he reached for his glass, a soft vibration from the table caught his attention. For a moment, his expression changed. He wasn't expecting any messages. Only a few people knew his new number, and he had carefully built his life to shield himself from unwanted memories of the past. His hand hovered over the phone before he finally picked it up. His chest tightened when he saw the name on the screen. Grace. Another message. Another plea for forgiveness. Years had passed since he disappeared from her life, and though her attempts had become less frequent, the tone remained the same. Regret, sorrow, and a desperate plea for redemption. Grace, once the center of his universe, had become a distant memory, a shadow of lost trust and betrayal. Stephen stared at the screen, his jaw clenched. Part of him wanted to respond, to unleash the anger that still smoldered beneath his calm exterior. But another part, the one that had found fragile peace, resisted. He had left all of that behind, Grace and Anthony, who were left to deal with the consequences of their lies. There was no point in reopening that wound. Not now. Not when he had finally found something better. Taking a deep breath, Stephen opened the message, his finger pausing for a moment before he pressed, Delete. The message disappeared, taking with it the last fragment of his past. He placed the phone back on the table, his eyes returning to Anna. She was watching him, curiosity flickering in her gaze. Is everything okay? She asked softly, her brows slightly furrowed. Stephen nodded, a light smile playing on his lips. Yes, he replied quietly. Everything's fine. Anna smiled in relief and rested her head on his shoulder. They sat in peaceful silence, the soft sound of waves crashing against the shore, creating a soothing backdrop for the evening. For the first time in years, Stephen felt truly free. He had found his peace, a clean break from the past. Grace and Anthony had become ghosts and their pain and remorse were no longer his burden. He was moving forward. In this quiet moment, with Anna by his side and the horizon of his future as vast as the ocean before him, Stephen realized something. He was happy. Truly happy. And for the first time, that was enough. Months passed, and Stephen's new life with Anna had settled into a steady rhythm. But one afternoon, while sorting through work emails in his office, the sudden ringing of the phone shattered his tranquility. An unknown number flashed on the screen. His finger hovered over the reject button, but something made him hesitate. On impulse, he answered, Hello? His voice was cautious, filled with doubt. A brief pause followed before a calm, confident female voice broke the silence. Hello, Stephen. His heart skipped a beat. He didn't recognize the voice, but something in its tone felt unsettlingly familiar. A calm coldness that instantly made him tense. Who is this? He asked sharply. I'm the one who knows about your wife's affair, came the response, and her words hung in the air. There are things you don't know yet. 
Stephen sat up straight, his body tensing. He thought he had uncovered all the secrets, all the betrayals. Grace and his half-brother Anthony had already faced the consequences of their actions. But now this stranger was claiming there was more. Something deeper, something dark lurking beneath the surface. What are you talking about? Stephen asked, his voice thick with tension. His mind raced, trying to piece together what she could mean. Were there still secrets he hadn't uncovered? More lies? The woman on the other end of the line chuckled softly, as if amused by the situation. It's not something that can be explained over the phone, she said smoothly. And in that moment, a new mystery unfolded before Stephen, threatening to pull him back into the darkness he had fought so hard to escape. Let me meet with you, and everything will become clear. Stephen's pulse quickened. The last thing he wanted was to dive back into the chaos he had fought so hard to leave behind. He had pieced his life back together, distancing himself from the web of lies that once suffocated him. But a restless curiosity gnawed at his mind, leaving him uneasy. What else could be revealed? Stephen's voice was sharp and wary as he responded, I'm not playing games. If you have something to say, just say it. There was a sigh on the other end of the line, tinged with disappointment. Stephen, I know it's hard for you to trust people now, but what I have to tell you will change everything. It's bigger than you think. If you walk away now, you'll regret it. Stephen gripped the phone so tightly his knuckles turned white. Part of him wanted to hang up, to leave this conversation in the past, along with everything else, and never look back. But the weight of not knowing pressed on him. There was one final piece of the puzzle he had to confront. After a long pause, Stephen relented. All right, where and when? They agreed to meet the next day at a small cafe in a nearby town. Stephen deliberately chose not to tell Anna about the call. He didn't want to drag her into the darkness of his past. This was something he needed to face alone. The next morning, he arrived at the cafe early, choosing a table in the corner with his back against the wall. He watched everyone who came through the door, his nerves on edge. His mind raced with endless questions. Who was this woman? How did she know about Grace and Anthony? And what revelation could she bring that would turn everything upside down? At exactly 11 a.m., a tall woman in dark sunglasses and a long coat entered the cafe. She spotted Stephen immediately and made her way toward him. As she got closer, he noticed her sharp, almost predatory features. Her movements were smooth, but there was a hidden tension that put him on alert. Stephen, she said curtly, nodding as she sat across from him. He didn't respond, studying her closely, waiting for her to make the first move. The woman removed her sunglasses, revealing striking green eyes that seemed to pierce right through him. My name is Olivia, she said directly. I worked with Anthony, she added. At the mention of his half-brother's name, Stephen's stomach tightened. Even after all these years, hearing Anthony's name sent waves of anger and resentment through him. What do you want, Olivia? he asked harshly. Olivia leaned in closer and lowered her voice. I'm here to help you. I've been connected to Anthony for a long time, long before Grace came into the picture. Stephen grew more confused. What does this have to do with me? he demanded, losing patience. A faint smile flickered across Olivia's lips, but her eyes remained cold. Anthony had a lot of secrets, Stephen. His affair with Grace was just the beginning. He was involved in much darker things, and your family? They protected him not just because of the affair. Stephen's mind raced, trying to make sense of her words. What do you mean? Darker things? Are you talking about something illegal? Very illegal, Olivia whispered. And your parents, your siblings, they all knew. They were all involved. That's why they hid the affair from you. It wasn't just about family loyalty. They were profiting from his schemes. The air seemed to drain from the room as Stephen absorbed her revelation. His parents? His siblings? 
He had already been shattered by their betrayal when he discovered they had hidden Grace's affair with Anthony from him. But this, this was far worse. Why are you telling me this now? Stephen asked, his voice hardening. What do you want from me? Olivia leaned back in her chair, her eyes fixed on him. Anthony is gone, she said in a flat, emotionless voice. With his death, there's no one left to protect the others. I decided you needed to know the truth so you can make your next moves. Stephen froze, stunned, as her words began to sink in. The family he once trusted, the very people who had raised him and earned his loyalty, were now entangled in something far darker than he could have ever imagined. His thoughts spiraled into chaos, trying to grasp the enormity of this revelation. It was as if the final piece of the puzzle had finally fallen into place, revealing that the web of lies he had been slowly unraveling was far more complex than he had anticipated. Breaking the heavy silence, Olivia stood up. I'll leave you to process this, she said, sliding a small envelope across the table toward him. Everything you need is inside. The next step is yours. Stephen's gaze followed her as she left the cafe leaving him alone with the envelope and the crushing weight of the secret she had just revealed. What he had thought was merely a story of betrayal had transformed into something much darker, a story of manipulation, corruption, and deceit that ran far deeper than he ever could have imagined. Now, he had to decide how to close this grim chapter of his life. My friend, and this is the end of the story. If you liked this story, then put your royal like and subscribe to the channel. May the force be with you.